Little Bo Peep has lost her sheep, and PETA, if it gets its way, is going to make sure she doesn't find him. This is the focus group. It's the savvy side of 9 to 5. Listen. Bueller. 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 Laugh. <laughs> And learn. Negotiation. This is what you do in business. This is The Focus Group with Tim Bennett. S-T-A-U-N-C-H. And John Nash. Keep your clothes looking neat and clean. We're all business. Except when we're not. I should sign it to you. Hey, welcome to The Focus Group. John Nash here with my very good friend and co-host, Mr. Tim Bennett. Red light. <laughs> Red light on. He's mesmerized. Hey, go to focusgroupradio.com. Uh, that's where we have all the information about our shows. Our entire uh, audio and video catalog is there, plus the platform is on if you want to subscribe that way. And you can check out our partners as well. So focusgroupradio.com. Welcome to the first official week of February, the Super Bowl. The Super Bowl has passed. And did anybody even care? Oh, well, wait. I, I had posted we it. We have in the booth helping us to you every single week the fantastic team of... Garrett on audio, John on video, and it's Steve the intern. Steve the in yeah, I got, yeah, I got some. We have STI. To Steve, Steve the, the intern. intern. STI. STI. <laughs> I, I, get you an STI I like that. That's all awesome. right, guys. Guys, you watch Super Bowl? Uh, yeah. Look, I defensive showdown. Me telling you that I'm not a football fan will be no surprise to the booth. What? But me telling you that I actually knew it was it. a dull game. If I knew it's a dull game, right? Yeah. Well, the ads were yeah. dull, too. Oh, the yeah. ads were... Ads were horrible. I, I think Half-time show, too. Yeah. Yeah. I posted today that I think, the, I think they've jumped the shark with the ad game because all these brands, about three or four years ago, started releasing them early. Mm -hmm. Now there's even brands making Super Bowl commercials that have no intentions of putting them Ever on the Super airing. Bowl. Yeah. But they're doing it all online, and it's taken away the fun of... For people like yourself, John, that were a fair weather fan of football, well, I, would I would watch, watch it, it for, for the, the ads, advertising, yeah. which a lot of people did. Mm -hmm. And so the audience was the lowest it's been in 10 years. My favorite, my favorite moment in the whole Super Bowl was something happened with the Patriots, and the camera was up on one of the sky boxes, and Giselle, Tom Brady's wife, and the commentator goes, oh, Giselle is happy. Giselle is happy. And I'm like, who? <laughs> gives a crap if Giselle's happy or not. Of course she is. Her husband makes millions of dollars a year, right? Well, that halftime show. Oh, halftime. Who was the rapper? When that Cadillac showed up and, and him in the fur, fur I thought it was Aretha Franklin. I was like, oh you my know, Aretha gosh. Aretha would have been a... She's the only one that deserves to be in a Cadillac with a fur anymore. Yeah, she would have been Aretha. a great... Well, unfortunately, she's but, not with us. But, but when I saw that, I just screamed because I thought this Maroon 5, the little, the little flat belly was trying to Adam say Levine. Adam Levine. Well, he got raked over the Coles the next day for uh, taking his shirt off and doing this whole thing. Did you see the picture I posted on our Facebook? So that <laughs> I love, I love people are so funny. That fat guy with his beard wrote with a Sharpie, Illinois, <laughs> across his belly. He had California on it. <laughs> But the game ended. I was like, ho hum. And then I started, like, I went online to Ad Age, I think it was, and they had a list of all the ads. I started watching them. I was, like, practically falling asleep. And the one that I liked the most was Burger King's Andy Warhol ad. Yeah. But by the way, do you know where that ranked in the people meter? The worst ad of the Super Bowl. You're kidding me. Bottom. 58, you and I love 58 that out of 58. I was shocked. That's why when you and I were back in the day on our other platform at Series X and we did our own Super Bowl ranking which um, maybe we, maybe someday we should do it again. But I would say that a lot of, I would say a lot of our listeners probably like the, the Andy, Andy Warhol, Warhol ad. Yeah. And one oh, I first thought it was for Heinz ketchup. Yeah, especially when he's doing that with the bottle. He's shaking the bottle. But yeah. you said it actually came from a movie. Yeah, it was a, a Swedish filmmaker uh, shot. There was four minutes, four to five minutes of him eating the burger, just eating the burger, which they cut down. But that was for a movie called America in Seconds or something that he made. And someone remembered this. It was from the late 60s. Now, another writer said that they were happy that one of their favorite spots was one of the only LGBT spots. You, and you'd have to know that Andy Warhol was gay yeah. to, to get that. But uh, that was not the intent of the spot, I'm sure. But um, I thought the M&M ad was horrible. I thought Doritos was poor. I, um, I liked the Kia Telluride ad. Yeah. But it, 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 they said they stole, stole um, kind of a page out of the Chrysler or Fiat Chrysler playbook. But... My whole deal with that product, though, is it 
to me seems Kia and Telluride seem no, to me it, to be a disconnect. It's a brand mismatch. Right. right? And, um, you know, brands tend to do that sometimes when you're trying to find out what's available for, for town names and trying to create an image of something. But um, it looks like it's a nice product. I'm not so sure it's named properly, but we'll see. Mm. Maybe we should call Telluride and see if they'll sponsor. <laughs> Yeah, maybe maybe we'll we know do people out we'll there. We'll call Kia and find out if they want to be at Gay Ski Week with the mm -hmm. which is which ride. literally is happening third week or like soon. end of the month. Yeah, end of the month. Okay. I think yeah, we'll do that. See, so we get some coin. You know what? I, I will say this. What's I, I I just was really disappointed in the whole thing because the build up. Um, and and here's the thing: if a brand is going to spend what was the was five million five million for thirty, for 30 seconds. And then you always, as when you were a director of marketing, your rule of thumb was if if someone was doing an event or a sponsorship and it was like at the Gorge Games or something and it was a $30,000 sponsorship fee, you would always tell the person to have that much money saved or set aside to activate it properly, right? So you, so in a in the case of a Super Bowl ad, if the spot costs $5 million, it probably cost them a million to make, especially the car ads, right? Those are well north of a million. Yeah, well, well north of a million. Particularly that, could be, that could be a small company's entire marketing budget. I mean, I don't mean to trivialize it, but when you make these decisions that you're going to buy a Super Bowl, you literally are cutting out huge chunks of the budget that can go to far more productive uses, in my opinion. When you're hoping, and you're hoping you're, everybody's doing the, the shotgun approach of, I'm going to hit so many people. But and this year they didn't. proved over and over again that that doesn't, that doesn't necessarily work if you're talking to a lot of the wrong people with maybe the message you want. But we know a lot of brands that have done real well on the Super Bowl, and the products still haven't sold. Yeah, that's true. That's so true. The ad could be the funniest thing in the world. You can do a very entertaining ad and still, um, you think about all those dot coms that we're doing. I was ads. just going to go to. What was the one with the with the boobs? What was that? Daddy, Go Daddy. Yeah, Go Daddy. I'm going to Go Daddy this year. Go Daddy was not in, you know, and and that's that's again a reflection of that. I think Wix had an ad though in the Super yeah, they Bowl, did. That, and that's that's a so Go Daddy. I bet Go Daddy can't do the ad anymore. When she's shaking her maracas. Think about that. I mean, and and that was the other thing that. So you saw the uh, Alexa ad, the Alexa spot with Harrison Ford yeah. and the dog that keeps barking, and I thought it was okay. I didn't, you know, jump up and down laughing at it. I'm like, this is pretty predictable. I mean, and the casting was predictable, and the way they acted. I, <laughs> I did your Alexa's thing um, the other night. I was telling somebody about it. So you know my friends down in Rehoboth, Mark Pimpkin. Yeah, Mark and Carl love them. Well, he always says France. It's France. It is France. France. That's how you say it. That's and you did it. Yes. So you you said to Alexa, and I was trying to tell my Tour friend. I said John had asked Alexa for results from the Tour de France, and Alexa kept saying I don't understand or whatever she said. And then Bob said, "What? Oh, honey, you're doing it all." I'm like Alexa, what was the result? What was this? Who won today's stage of the Tour de France? Tour de France. I don't understand what you're saying. And then Bob just looks at me and goes, "Oh, honey, oh, honey." And then he walks up to it and he goes, "Alexa, who won today's Tour de France?" Today's stage of the Tour de France was won so by, and I'm like, we oh were my screaming God. because so I said I was telling Brian that it was over at Brian at Admark 360's house, and I said John did this watch, so I said the same thing. I said Alexa, what were the latest results of the Tour de France? I do not understand. And then I said, now say Tour de, what were the results of Tour de France? The Tour de France in 2018 results are. <laughs> So you're gonna. Somebody's gonna. We're gonna have to call Brian Johnson and tell him he needs to make sure that she understands France. That's why you're. <laughs> as my friend Mark was it. That's the way you say it. That's the way you say it. France. Well, I I get even complex with Alexa. Sometimes I'll say Alexa, play. Like I'll start talking like I'm talking to a person. I'm looking for a track, and Bob just sits there and shakes his head, shakes his head, and no, you can't do that. You can't do that. I'm like, well, what's the point? Are you play Jeopardy with her. Can you play Jeopardy? Oh, it's great. Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah. We play Jeopardy. So what do you say? Alexa, play Jeopardy? Alexa, play Jeopardy. And then Alex Trebek comes on, and then you do, it's like today's Jeopardy game, and they go through the categories, then you answer, and then they tell you where you are and where you stand with everyone else who played that day. And then it will catch up and say, you 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 did not play yesterday. Would you like to catch up? Now, we love it. Bob's going to hear this, and now Bob has a new reason to maybe reacquaint himself with Alexa, who he has nothing but cuss words it's for. It's fun. It's actually fun to play. You could also say, depending on how you're wired up, you could say, Alexa, play the focus group. Yes. And, you know. And you can also do that on your Comcast. Uh, if you have Comcast or Xfinity and you have the voice remote, you can Alexa, do that. It'll take you to YouTube and play it. Play the focus group. Right. There you go. All right. So...
What caught your eye? What caught, what caught eye? your eye? Here's what Tim and John found. Now, wait a minute. We have, we have a couple of calls here. Want to do the calls first? Sure thing. The, um, let's go with Don. I think we had Don in Alabama contact. <laughs> Hi, Don. Guys. Don, how are you? So it's been, the word it's been France so... works really well. What, what does? The word France works really well because you have my Alexa going crazy right now. Oh, really? <laughs> yes. So she heard us say Alexa to France? Yes, and I, I, had, I have now had to mute the show until we get past the Alexa segment because she keeps reading me off the results of the Tour de France. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> so it works. But she didn't go off on France. She went off on France. France. She knows France. She doesn't know France. She knows France. Isn't it disappointing, Don? Isn't it just dis- you're, you're You're a man who appreciates correctness and language mm-hmm. and all other things. And, and it's, this device is so darn frustrating sometimes. <laughs> what can I say? Eventually, remember, these things will replace us and we'll be ta- they'll be talking to us. We won't be talking to them. So. <laughs> Yeah. And, and enjoy being the masters while we can. <laughs> hey, Don, I thought of you, quick, 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 when I saw this, that Boeing was, um, and I thought of you only because you're a rocket science scientist. I, I no, 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 he is a display expert. Museum. Yeah, I'm a museum and, expert. I just live in Rocket City. But, he well, lives no, in but, Rocket. I, but I think you know Rocket. It rubs off on right. it. Oh, yeah. But th- did you see the thing where Boeing is doing these, um, like, drone taxis for people? People? Yes. I, I, do you think they'll work? Yes. Okay. The Jetsons is just 10 years away. So did you see these, John? Wait, wait. The Jetsons. It's 10 years I grew away. up on the Jetsons. I wanted a robot made. I wanted a jet pack. And I wanted that car with the bubble. <laughs> did you, that's what this is. Did you see it? No. I'll have to, get yeah. you, I'll have to post it. There are, there are three companies here in Huntsville. All three of them are working on uh, low-altitude flying platforms for two and four passengers. Yeah, and they say they they expect to be ready in a year or two to go. Now, yes. do, do you see yeah. the precision of the language that Don used as well? Two two and four person low flying platforms, yeah. so it's yeah. not going to be super them, high. Yep, yeah, they're not they're not aircraft. They're low flying platforms. I think that's great. <laughs> well, we'll yeah. take our first ride with you when we get to Alabama, and we'll have Alexa. Alexa will be driving. <laughs> Thanks, Don. Oh, God, no. Thank you, Don. Bye, Bye guys. And uh, we, have we have Jason from New York. Jason, Jason New welcome York. to the show. Hi, warm cacao greetings from New York City. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cacao, yes. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Too soon, too soon. No, not at all. <laughs> Listen, um, I'm a big fan of you guys. I've been listening since the facility days. I'm a DNR cult member, so I'm first time caller, but I've been listening for years. Well, thank you. What, what do you have for us today, Jason? I have a question. I don't remember what show it was, but is someone had said, I think it was Tim, that their favorite movie was The Shining, right? Oh, yes. Tim, Tim loves yes. The Shining, yeah. Oh, Tim, I yes. want to know if you've seen this documentary called Room 237. Room 237? J- Jason, is Room 237 the room in the Overlook Hotel where that, the, those, that he, Jack Nicholson goes to and that woman, beautiful woman comes out of the bathtub and then she turns into like, yeah. a, oh. One of, the, one of the scenes, but this is an actual documentary about all of the symbolism within the movie and that's one of the key numbers in it. It's, it's mind-blowing. Tim, I think you should put it on your Netflix ASAP. Well, that's a, good, that, that's a good, I wonder if I can get that through deep discount. That's, that's a good, that's a good, um, I never heard of this. Yeah. How, when did it come out? 2013, I think. Wow, so it's called Room 237. Yeah, I'm writing it down. Yeah. I, I love this kind so of thing. So does it Jason. go through all the symbolism in The Shining? Oh my God, everything, and it links it back to that old, I don't know if you ever heard this, this um, theory that um, Kubrick actually um, Manufactured the Apollo landing on the moon. Yeah, you guys ever hear about that? Yeah, oh yeah, that's right. a, that's yep. Well, there's several nods inside The Shining to that um, <laughs> thing, including like the way the carpet patterns are made and the colors that he chose. It's crazy. Wow. The hotel structure, like the lobby, the way it's laid out. It's. I mean, it's a little bit conspiracy theory, but it's wild. Uh, no, no, I li- Jason, I like this because Kubrick controls the movie and the direction yeah. and the set design. And so that entire overlook is a set. Yeah. And so yeah, when you is. just said that he wove some meaning into the actual patterns on the rugs and on the floor, yeah. 
I think yeah. this sounds really, really cool. So it's called Room 237. It's a documentary yeah. about... Yeah, it's really good. That'll be fun. The wow. making of The Shining and the symbolism. Well, thanks for uh, right. thanks for letting us know that. And don't be a stranger. Call us again. Yeah, call any time, Jason. Bye. Thank you. All right. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Thank you. I never heard of that 237. That sounds cool. I jotted this down, and uh, when Jason said, when I was reading that thing, it said, you know, a documentary, I saw another documentary this weekend on Hulu, random, total random, and it was the man who knew too much or something. Uh, I got, I got, it's about a guy who used to watch The Price is Right every day, and memorized what different things were, the showcases, the refrigerators, and then he got on the show. And and Bob Barker, there's clips of Bob Barker speaking to him in the audience. Uh, his name is Theodore or Ted or something. Oh, Ted knows what the price is. I mean, it's a very intriguing. And one day, one guy. What uh, was it called? I think it's called the the man who knew too much man or something. Too much. But it was a. It, I'll find the documentary title, but. He actually would yell from the audience to get people at the... You could do that. You could say, it's $5. Yeah. Is what, and he yelled one day the price of a package, and it was the exact number. And every, the show stopped. Everybody was freaked out. He knew it because he'd seen the package before. And the guy that heard him on stage who won claimed that he had hit the lucky number. He did the same thing. But there was some conspiracy thing going on. But So I love this kind of thing. So room 237, thank you, Jason. Point. All right, so what caught your eye? What caught your eye? Here's what Tim and John found. So I mentioned Brian Roman earlier from Admark 360. He is one of these people. I don't know where he's like Matthew. I don't know where he curates his news from. He told me the other night that there were 179 people running for president. I told him he was crazy. There was like 179 people <laughs> registered that are running for president. I don't know where I've got to trust not, Brian. So he sends me this and says, send this to your dad because my dad's a big birder. My dad's a big bird watcher. And uh, I thought it was a joke, so I didn't pay attention to it. And then it showed up again and again and again. And so then I went back to Brian's original note, and here it is. The headline is, this extremely rare bird is half female, half male. And now it has a boyfriend. <laughs> so, all right, it's it half female, half know. male, and it has a boyfriend. So it's a, okay. a gynandromorph cardinal. And it was spotted in Erie, Pennsylvania by this couple, uh, Shirley and Jeffrey Caldwell at their feeder. And if you're watching along, you'll see that there's a picture of it. And they say this happens a lot with birds, but we don't notice it because birds tend to be the same color. But with cardinals, the male is red, and, bright, the, female, bright, bright, bright and the female is kind of this brown and sometimes maybe a little tone of yellow. But if you see the close-up there, if you're watching on the video, that's the actual bird they took the picture of there in the snow, and he's half female, Half male. The bird is actually half red. Oh my half God! White. It's literally the bird is like split down the middle uh, on the coloring. And they say this happens a lot based upon the way the chromosomes and the eggs um, will be fertilized. And they said it happens with birds a lot, but we just don't really know it because you can't really tell many birds are the same color except in these species where there's a very identifiable, which is what um, they call uh, the cardinals. And so they're known as half ciders. Is what the, so, the National Geographic. So there's calls. been enough of them in the wild that someone came up with the nickname a half cider. Isn't that interesting? Okay. So they said that um, they're half ciders among or, or um, they said they're not on, as uncommon as you would think, and they said that the only birds. Um, I'll I'll just read this so I don't mess it up. It says. Um, sex determination in birds is different than in mammals. In mammals, males have one copy of each chromosome, an X and a Y, and females have two Xs. Okay. But they said birds are the opposite. And a lot of times, only the um, female will carry, uh, her ovaries are only work on the left side of the bird. Interesting. So they said that this, because this bird is female on the left, they think this one can actually produce, because that's the only side the ovaries work. And if you took DNA sample off of each side, the male side will show up male, and the female side will show up female. Wow. It, it got a little too scientific for me in, in here. <laughs> but um, they said that it's uh, not, as, not as uncommon as you think, and that he's got a bo she, or the bird's got a boyfriend. So they're excited because they think that she's, she's going to lay an egg on her female side, and that there may be a family of these, these uh, half-siders flying around. Is there also the, tr the chance that if she does... Um have produce have chicks or baby I, don't, I forget what they call them for it's probably chicks but that it could just be a normal cardinal yeah 
So, okay. Because they said that um, in, in birds, the sex chromosomes are called Z and W. Females have a single copy, each of a ZW. Males have two Zs. Got it. Okay. And the males can only produce, produce Z sperm, and females can do Z or W. So the female decides if it's male or female. And that's interesting because... In human mating, it's the, it's the male that right. determines the sex of the child, the, the father's. Right. Yeah. Interesting. So they said this is exciting. <laughs> Everybody is. They're, they're glad the bird's not lonely. So I like the down, the down note of this is exciting. This is exciting. See how, see the difference? Would you see, would you see the, would you, would you, I don't know what I would do if I saw the bird like that. Well, first I would almost think that someone had, had, had cruelly captured the bird and then did something like yeah. colored its feathers or something, but because it's so cleanly divided down the middle that it's almost as if someone did do that, right? Yeah. It's fascinating. So that was what caught my eye. All right, mine is a little different. I teased it at the top of the show. If you are a Pixar animation fan like I am, or if you just like the movie Toy Story like I do, <laughs> Um, I was happy with Toy Story 1. They didn't really have to do 2, 3, and anything else. Because I always think... Did just, you watch all the other ones? Oh, I love them. I love them. And I think they got better and better and better. But I'm, I'm also just a fan of a one-off. But What did you learn about Toy Story, John? Toy Story 4. What did I learn about? Oh, it's, it's Wizard of Oz. There's no place like home. There's no place like home. Character leaves home, is helped by someone with magical powers. They solve the problem. They come back. But then home is never quite the same way because they're transformed on the journey. And it's called The Hero's Journey. And we learned that from a producer in California who told us a, a cartoon that we had manufactured and created we were so proud of was only going to play in one town. <laughs> but he did tell us a way to make it. Remember, he was going to yeah. do the decon toys. And mm -hmm. Yeah, he said, here's how you can do this Never whole got thing. Ready. Well, yeah. Hollywood knocked. We didn't listen. <laughs> Hollywood. We were at the Ivy. We were at the, yeah, we, we were, we we're not far from there, that's for sure. Anyway, Pixar's Toy Story 4 is coming to theaters this summer, and uh, it's so it's months away, but already there's some controversy brewing about a character that's returning who was in the original Toy Story. Uh, she wasn't in Toy Story 3, and I'm not sure she was in 2. I think she was in 2, but it's Little Bo Peep. She lost her sheep. That's why she finally found it. So her. Little Bo Peep in the original Toy Story was a very had a big skirt, and she was Woody, uh, the Tom Hanks character. She was Woody's love interest, or she liked him. And she always has a crook. And the crook is the hook that the shepherds have, and that's how we know that she's Bo a Peep. Shepherd, she's Bo Peep. Well, animal rights group PETA wants Pixar's upcoming Toy Story 4 to get rid of Bo Peep's crook. It's voiced by Annie Potts. The character was noticeably absent from uh, Toy Story 3, but after 20 years of not being an active part of the Toy Story family, she's back. PETA has released a statement addressing their desire to have Bo Peep's shepherd's crook removed from the final cut of Toy Story 4. With Pixar's modern reworking of Bo Peep's Look in the last latest film, PETA has asked director Josh Cooley to make additional changes. The request specifically addresses the fact that Bo Peep's new look is meant to appear modern, though PETA argues that the crook is outdated and cruel. The crook is a tool traditionally used by shepherds and those in the wool industry to hook sheep by the legs and neck in order to facilitate their control. All right, so this is the one, this is just something that I'm going to, do you know what it would take for them to get rid of the crook in, little, in, in this movie? Oh, well, I... The number of hour, of man hours that have gone into animating every second of this film. So if they decide to change this, and who knows how the crook has been used in terms of, is she carrying it? Is it just simply like a she prop? Grabbing Woody. She grabbing is she Woody using it with something? But that's Bo Peep. Exactly. And now, right? neither Pixar nor director... Uh, Cooley have said anything about this, uh, Josh Cooley. There's been nothing said, but the article had a, f a vague warning in there. And it says, whether or not you agree with PETA's tactics or even their claim that Bo Peep's crook is morally disagreeable, it's clear that the last thing Pixar needs is a dust-up before a su summer's Toy Story 4 release to be at the center of a controversy that could potentially harm box office receipts. Now, I'm going to go out on a limb here and say, Ain't nothing going to hurt Toy Story 4's <laughs> box office receipts, and I don't think it's going to be Bo Peep's crook. But this is one of those things. It's a category, right? PETA. Who cares? <laughs> do, do, well, do you think anybody's going to care? And if I was Pixar, I would just totally ignore this nonsense. I just don't. It's a, it's a storybook character, character. from... 1800. Yeah, well, it's what it, and that's and that's this that's how shepherds represented. I <sighs> next will be upset at Woody's got a holster, he's got to get rid of the gun. Then there's going to be there's going to be something, 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 something. Thank you. 
In fact, I never even thought of that. Sheriff Woody, right? Yeah. It's a toy gun. He's got the horse that, and the cowgirl. Pretty so sure riding a horse. I don't. Um, I just don't read that kind of thing, and I don't get upset about it. And I'm, maybe I'm a bad human being, but um, her crook never even crossed. All the crook means to me is she's a shepherd, or she do, does something with sheep. Knowing, of course, now that I read this, that the crook is used in a harmful way on sheep, or or it's it's cruel. All right, I, maybe I don't like the crook so much, but I, 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 believe me, folks, I can disassociate one from the other. She's going to be a character in an animated movie, right? Well, I'd be curious to see how she was portrayed. You said she was in Toy Story 1. I don't yeah. remember how she was. Well, she always just had that. It was, she was like a little figurine that came to life, and she was holding the crook. So it's, and again, let's, have, let's go back to Toy Story 1 when she was introduced. was all the way back in the uh, late 80s, early 90s. So we're talking, yeah, 20 years ago. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it is what it is. All right. Can anything be made anymore? <laughs> Can you, <laughs> see? And Tim, you and I talk about this all the time. It, it no, the quest, if you went back to the cartoons we grew up on, the TV shows we grew up on, oh boy, you, you watch them sometimes. You, you, what's that TV thing? We, was it Cozy TV or what's the one that Antenna had? Antenna TV. Antenna TV. TV. They have all the reruns of some of the shows that we grew up with. And I, the other day I was watching, uh, it was either Bewitched or it might have been Bewitched. And, and Amanda, or, or Miranda, what's the name of her mother? And Dora comes in and she says something to Derwin, you know, Derwin or whatever. She, always never, she purposely never pronounced his name. But there's this back and forth and I'm like, oh my God, would people say it today? I don't even think about it. I'm like, oh, it's bewitched, but I guess, you know. Well, watch the old match games, because they're on all the time on Buzzer, which I love. But, you know, Gene Rayburn does voices Whoa. and accents, and, you know. When he you reads never, the clue. Yeah, you can never do any of it now. No. Can't do it. Not allowed. But guess what? That's our white privilege, John. Yeah. <laughs> Where are we now? Oh, Biz's birthday. birthday. <laughs> Everyone does celebrity birthday greetings. But the Focus the Group is the only show in the universe that celebrates business birthdays. So, happy birthday. Today's February 6th. Born February 6, 1914, he died in 05 and 91, is Thurl Arthur Ravenscroft, who I had no idea who that was. I like the name. And he popped up, <laughs> and I'll tell you who he was, and then oh. you're going to know who he was. An American voice actor and bass singer known as the booming voice behind Kellogg's Frosted Flakes animated spokesman, Tony the Tiger. And what did Tony say? They're great! <laughs> and they used him up until he passed away in 2005 as the voice since uh, for, Are you serious? for decades. They say for over 50 years. He's been the voice of Tony the Tiger for over 50 years. And the only perk he got is they pick him up in a limousine and take him to the headquarters to do the voice and then he'd be done. But uh, he's also known for a bunch of other stuff that we all know that um, we had no idea about. Particularly, he was uncredited. He was the vocalist for um, the, How the Grinch Stole Christmas, the song You're a Mean One, Mr. Grinch. So he sang the song. Right. Everybody thought that it was uh, his name was accidentally omitted from the credits. And everybody believed, erroneously, that the uh, cartoon's narrator, Boris Karloff, was the singer, or Tennessee Ernie Ford. But no, it was, in fact, it was uh, Thurl Ravenscroft. He also voices, to this day still, uh, if you go to Disney, he's the voice heard on Pirates of the Caribbean, The Haunted Mansion. He's, uh, he's Uncle Theodore at Disneyland. He's part of the, um, the story and song from The Haunted Mansion. He's also part of the Country Bear Jamboree, the Mark Twain Riverboat, the Pirates of the Caribbean, the Railroad, the Tiki Room. He was the voice of the whale in Pinocchio. Really? And, uh, yeah, and he sang, on a, he sang a lot of backup stuff. He also sang the opening songs for the Mickey Mouse Club, also some work for the Hardy Boys, and uh, it goes on and on and on. But uh, pretty cool, pretty cool career. He, uh, in 2005, right after he passed away, Ad Age had uh, commemorated him with a headline, Behind Every Great Character is Even a Greater Man. And they profiled uh, all he did um, as a character actor. And there's a list and list and list of stuff. He also did the um, on-air announcements for TWA when they did the films of, you know, Fasten Your Seatbelts. And... Uh, Bunch you of know, um, Alice in Wonderland. I almost, one Dalmatians. I almost think you picked this just for me. Or you know, I did. Well, I saw it. See, so it's also the founder of Toyota's birthday. <laughs> 
but we've done we've found done it, him before. We found him, yeah. And I said to John, I wasn't so sure this was a business birthday, and John said, "Oh, it sure it is. is. This is a career. He's this a guy, career. this guy made a career out of being a voice actor, and I think it's fantastic." And there are a lot of great voice actors, actually. Um, a lot of actors do good VO work as well. But um, in animation, this is critical, I mean, to be able to do what he does. And my, my God, we grew up with Tony, right? They're great. Yeah, they said he started working in 1940 and worked up until his death in 05. Talk about a career. What? See, what a great What? I bet he, you know, um, I bet he was one of these guys, if he were living, we could ask him this question. I wonder if he even thought of it as work. Well, he was good friends with, is it Mel Blanc? Yeah, Mel did Blanc. A lot is, of Looney Tunes, oh, my God. He also did some Looney Tunes work, but Mel obviously was the, the voice. Was the, the oh voice. My God. But he did, he did some other characters in there. But they said there was a whole group of these folks who, and you probably know this from your animation work, that there was a small yeah. cadre of, of uh, men and women, probably mostly men, as my guess, that did this animation and did mm -hmm. the voicing and. And acting to an extent. I mean, it is acting. It is acting. And and the reason these guys were so good is they knew how to hit it, do the beats, take, take the pauses. Fit the that character. way the animator can yeah. then make the character think and do things. They said they've replaced his voice at Kellogg's, but every now and then they'll resurface. They'll use his, they use old recordings. They're allowed to still use them, but they have got a new voice. But people still like to go back to the... I, I think know. I think these this kind of a business birthday and this kind of a career is fascinating. That... that, that documentary I mentioned earlier about the price is right they, they interviewed Bob Barker and Bob Barker at one point says you know I've had an amazing life he said think of what I've done for my entire life he, go, he, go, he loves he loved doing the game show host but he, he was the first to admit that you know he didn't have to work job. he didn't have to work in a shop or he had to go on an assembly line I mean and Pat say Jack and Vanna how tough is that job <laughs> they work 30 days a week you never days a year I think you never include um, Alex Trebek in there that's a tough job. You got to pronounce. See, I, I was, yeah. There's a lot of stress there. But the other one, you spin the wheel. What do you got, Vanna? <laughs> I knew you were going to hit a button. I knew you were going to differentiate between wheel Rebecca's of fortune. Rebecca's too smart. You got to know what you're doing there, right? Rebecca. Spin the wheel is spin the wheel. <laughs> All right. Bob Barker, remember we had that psychic on years ago, predicted his death about 10 years ago? She, we asked we asked when he was going to, oh, he's going to die this year any minute. Remember he's still alive? She, yeah, she didn't. Yeah, she got it wrong, though. She got other things she got right. Wrong. But she got a lot wrong. Well, hey. That's kind of like a weatherman. That's a great career. You're 50% right. You're 50% wrong. The only kooky psychic we have, and I want to find that old tape, was the one who predicted everything that's going on now. That was uh, our old platform, and I think like I know Spain how to. I think I know how to find that. Remember? Yeah, I do know. Yeah, oh, she was, ran her mouth she for She ran minutes. about economic this, and everything was. And you know, all years later, we're use money, and we're yeah. gonna and we're gonna elect crazy people. All came true. Countries. Right. Cold War, blah, blah, blah. All right. As many of you know here on the Focus Group, uh, Deep Discount is a partner of ours. We love working with them. Get to Deep Discount and start your shopping extravaganza by going to focusgroupradio.com. Clicking on the logo, Deep Discount's logo is a shark. Arr, Shuggy the shark. February is one of our favorite months because Deep Discount lets us give you folks a code to use while you're shopping. And it's 15% off your entire purchase. Uh, one time use only. Good for everything except games and game consoles and can't be used with other coupons. But the code is, it's like, pa like Tim, the password is, <laughs> the code is FG15. And by the way, I used to love password. Um, so this, we get to pick our sales. They give us a list of sales. And they have great sales at Deep Discount. And so the sale that I chose, and I think Tim had a, I love your pick, by the way, is get a little action. Get a little action. It's great. Get a little action. I thought it might be, you know, a little romance, but it wasn't. <laughs> get a little action. So what'd you get? Well, I have a confession to make. And I have a number of friends who, if I ask them the best movie of all time, their favorite movie of all time, uh -huh. best movie made of all time, nine out of ten tell me it's The Godfather. And you're going to confess it? I've never watched it. <laughs> not one, not two? No, you have nothing. So this popped up, and uh, it's on Blu-ray, and it's you get three. You get, yeah, God, you get one and two and Godfather, three. you get Godfather Part 2, Part 3. Now, did you watch all three? Yes, and our Everybody favorite— Everybody says the one is the best, right? The first I one. actually—my favorite's Godfather Part 2. Hey, guys, really? do you like the one or two? My, my favorite's Godfather 2 because it's really more about— Ooh, I like two because it goes into the history and uh, his dad and stuff. Yeah, and f is that the one where Fredo gets knocked off? Oh, sorry. <laughs> Oh, Do you like one? Steve one. likes one. Okay. Yeah. But of course, one and two, never three. Yeah. I mean, one and two are entertaining. Three is just min misunderstood. <laughs> Can you believe uh, I haven't watched any of them? Three is misunderstood. That's yeah, a good way of... You'd love it. Yeah, I could believe that. 
Yeah. yeah it's yeah. like a really cool book, not but, just about but, the mafia, but it's also about like business too. Yeah. Well, it's yes. Really cool. yeah. Uh, and human and and human capital and. <laughs> It was it was career making performances for Al Pacino, James Caan, Robert Duvall. It was up for ten Academy Awards and won three, including Best Picture in '72. And this Blu-ray, aside from having the three films, it also has nine minutes of additional footage for Godfather Three that were part of the director's cut that weren't available at the movie. But for uh, for thirty eight dollars, it's a great thirty eight dollars and fifty one cents. It's a great thing. So to you're going to buy collection. it? Yeah, because I haven't seen it, and everybody yells at me and that Tim, I haven't seen it. Tim, Tim, you're so lucky. I'll tell you why. You're going to see without a commercial interruption, which is the way to see it, and you're going to settle in, and you're going to be blown away. I mean, it's a they're one. I, I, as the guy said, and I agree with him. One and two is the best. Three may be misunderstood. <laughs> Steve, very hilariously points out. I didn't misunderstand it. I thought it was not a very good film. Is there a movie could... you've missed? No, I love movies. So I, I've missed movies, believe me. In fact, my pick is a movie that I saw many years ago. All right, so I'm going through, uh, I do what Tim does. I go to deepdiscount.com. I always get there by focusgroupradio.com, by the way. All right, click on the shark, sharky. And <laughs> I went to the sale and I went like six or seven pages in right away. Like you, you, you avoid the first page. You... And what do I see but a gray cover of a movie, and it's called Man on a Swing. It instantly triggered a memory, and I thought, oh, my God, it's Cliff Robertson and Joel Gray. So this is a classic, classic movie. I, I, it's black and white. I'll just read the description. It's a really good movie. It's called A Small Town Police Chief, Lee Tucker, who's played by Cliff Robertson, who I love, investigating the murder of a young woman is offered help by a supposed clairvoyant. Franklin Willis, who's played by Joel Gray, who gives him details of the crime that he's seen in visions. The details are startlingly correct, but Tucker is not convinced that Willis is indeed clairvoyant and begins to suspect him of the murder. And I'll just leave it at that. But it's so Joel Gray's performance, he's this clairvoyant, as I said, and he's really, really specific about things. But the way the movie rolls along, you don't really know if he's truly clairvoyant or if maybe he did, in fact, commit this murder. It's really well done. I always love movies like that. Um, so it's directed by Frank Perry, who, if you know Frank Perry at all, you'll know that he directed the movie Mommy Dearest. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> so this is one of these uh, movies that I just think, if you're going to have like a, a good Blu-ray collection, Man on a Swing does not show up on streaming services, no. and it doesn't show up on TV too often, but this is definitely a well-made... Guys, could you zoom in? I think it's 1962 or 71. I, I might be wrong on both counts. So... 74. 74. Okay, it's early 70s. But it's really, really, really well done. And it's, it, it's, it's the kind of movie that you like where it's, there's a tension. Yep. Um, and the tension's created by the dynamic of these two actors, the uh, Cliff Robertson and Joel Gray. Is there a swing involved? Um, I'm not going to tell you that. <laughs> That's just the man on the swing. We're going to leave it at that. We're right. got to order it from deep discount. Arr! And then the new release is A Private War. And, uh, this came and went. Well, what I loved about it, I'm sold. It says a woman who is comfortable downing martinis with high society's elite as she is brazenly staring down warlords and freeing from gunfire. Order that. Click. Put that in the basket. I'm sold. But uh, I did not see this. But it's based on the life of uh, Marie Colvin, who uh, was a wartime correspondent. Yeah. And... You know, the movie came out, I saw the trailers, I wanted to I understand more about it, but it seemed to come into theaters and go out just as quick. And I remember the night we were going to see this, or we were going to see, um, oh, I'm going to space on the name. It's the one that takes the court of Queen Anne, oh, The Favorite. And it was either we're going to go see A Private War or The Favorite. We chose The Favorite. Um, but I really wish I had seen this, so I would want to order it because, it, again, it's gritty. She's in the, these war zones, and she has guns pointed at her. It would freak me out. But she, you know. Well, head over to uh, focusgroupradio.com. Click on the Deep Discount logo. Again, remember, for the month of February, there's a, we've got a uh, special code FG15, which allows you to get 15% off your purchase. But uh, you can't use that with other coupons, and it's not good for games or game consoles. consoles. Is that right, John? That's right. So you get to own your obsession here at Deep Discount. And uh, John recommended uh, on the Get a Little Action Sale, Man on a Swing, I'm going to see The Godfather for the first time in my life, and the new release is A Private War. What do you have to say, Garrett? Thanks, Deep Discount. We're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we've got uh, a couple of shop talks we're going to run through, so stay with us.
You're listening to The Focus Group with Tim and John. Learn more at focusgroupradio.com. Focus on the savvy side of 9 to 5 with The Focus Group. Try, really try. Listen, laugh, and learn with Tim and John. I never try anything. I just do it. Welcome back to The Focus Group. John Nash with Tim Bennett. That little line you heard right before we came back in is one of our favorites. I don't try anything. I just do it. And it's What's her name? Kitty? Tara Satana from the movie Faster Pussycat Kill Kill. Three big-titted go-go girls go on a killing rampage with their little dune buggy cars. Did, did, did these guys ever see that guys, Do you know, do you know Russ Meyer, Faster Pussycat? I haven't, but I got to see it. You guys have described it twice now. It oh, you would right love it. Yeah, you I've wouldn't. seen clips. You've seen clips? Okay, yeah. so you need the whole thing, it's got to, and you have to be kind of in a state of mind. You know. <laughs> no problem. It's like going to a dirty, it's like going to a dirty <laughs> bookstore. Thank you, Thank like you. Going to a dirty bookstore in Times Square in 1967. Yeah, yeah. it's clean. It's clean like that, right? Like, I mean, it's not. No, it's dirty. It's di- well, the, the yeah. Seedy. Seedy. All right. All right. Uh, we have some shop talks for you. The first one is. Uh, no, companies that force workers to sign away their right to sue are not LGBTQ friendly. So. Uh, very soon, the HRC will be releasing their Corporate Equality Index, and it's a ranking of corporate corporations, and it's based on a, a very interesting matrix that changes, actually, from year to year of inclusiveness, of benefits, of um, non-discrimination policies. And a company can score 100, or they can score 90. One year, they could score 100, and they change the criteria, and the next year, they're scoring a 90. The awful trans benefits. Yeah, exactly. The adoption benefits. And- the article, as Tim said to me during our little brief break, it's rather long-winded to get to the what was the one point that they're making in this whole article. Well, essentially that um, they would like the HRC to reevaluate, as you said, some of their criteria. Because a lot of, even though people say or companies might say that they don't discriminate against their LGBTQ employees, that there's lots of forced arbitration clauses in employment contracts or in your yep. agreement to work that you don't pay attention to. So that if, in fact, you were discriminated against, you don't have any recourse, really, because you've signed a way that you would go through arbitration, which is less expensive for the company and um, not beneficial, really, to the employee. It's really lopsided to benefit the, the company, is my takeaway on it. That's exactly right. So. Well, a company could have 100 on the HRC Equality Index, um, Corporate Equality Index. They probably have in place forced arbitration, and, 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 and Tim said it perfectly. So if you are discriminated against and you do bring a case against a company, you will be in arbitration. And, arbit- and arbiters are often handpicked by either the company or I, the, whoever is doing this, the arbitration. Only 50 to 59 percent of claims that are f- brought in uh, federal court actually ever really succeed so anybody who's had this issue come up or if you've if you've unfortunately been in the position of having to take an employer down the legal path because of something that happened i am sure you were told by an attorney and i've heard this from several people who've had this come up that the attorney literally will say to you are you sure you want to do this because You'll probably not win. It's going to cost thousands of dollars, and it's going to take forever because it's all drawn out until they get to the arbitration, and then it's oh well, you already signed this little piece of paper that says yeah. You know. You'll never work again in that industry probably, nope. and because you'll be tarnished. And like you said, any of these corporations, there's floors of lawyers, or there's a floor of lawyers at least in a big in a big company. And um, but they talked about a number of cases where people felt they were discriminated against or didn't get a promotion for one reason or another. They based it on the fact that they were um, they felt they were either harassed or uh, made fun of as being LGBT. And um, exactly what you said for the yeah. company, for an arbitrator, costs a thousand or two thousand bucks. It's a lot less money than getting attorneys. And hopefully somebody settles. And they said that's the big mystery here. Is most of these cases are settled, and then there's non-disclosure, so you can't talk about it, so you don't so know what. Tim, I'm looking at it right here. You you nailed it. You must. Are you on the same page? Because it says arbitration is a highly secretive process. Forced arbitration clauses are often accompanied by non-disclosure agreements. Decisions are very rarely published, and arbitration awards are virtually unreviewable by courts. So once the arbiter says, "Here's what it is. You're going to get five dollars. You're going to get a thousand dollars. You're going to get five thousand. 
that's sealed and gone, and it cannot be reopened, it can't be brought to court. And the Supreme Court, over the past 25 years, has upheld this and, in fact, strengthened this proceedings or this methodology that corporations use to resolve these issues when they come up. I thought it was a... Well, I thought it was a stretch a little bit to kind of saddle the HRC with it, but because I think it's more the norm than not. The companies have these. You know, their author of the piece actually does come out and say that at some point. He says, this is pretty standard. You might not know. Either you sign on the dotted line or you don't get the job. Or by working there, you agree to the terms. So you agree to the terms. And, and actually, you're right. The minute you start working, that's you're agreeing to the terms. Hey, last week, uh, if you were watching last week, and we hope you were, we welcomed the new partner to the show, and it's Homesick Candles. And you get there by going to homesick.com. And Homesick Candles, uh, I got to say, I, a bunch of my candles arrived. And they make sense that uh, I think the homesick part to me is because they have a whole line of candles that are representative of states right. and cities and colleges, right? And memories. <laughs> memories. And I, I will say that I, I and I re reported this to you and to a couple of other folks, I was really, really packaging. Um, blown away by the packaging. Yeah. The packaging is done well. It's quality. It's up, up market, Beautiful. I guess, for lack of a better word, luxury. And the quality of the glass that the candles are in, the scents, as you said, were very, very full. And uh, because I, I was wondering, I'm like, okay. Candles. Let's see what the let's see what it is. And I've seen them a lot. You, if you're on Instagram or you're on social media, they do a lot of work there. And as John said, when we got our candles, both of us were blown away by how no pun intended, <laughs> but how great they were. I got the Connecticut candle. You did. Okay, so I got a New York candle, and I the, I got um, Grandma's Kitchen. Grandma's Kitchen. Okay. And Grandma's Kitchen. Um, it's it's got it's 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 cinnamon it's cookie it, there's a, all these scents in there that remind you of a kitchen where grandma's baking something it, i found it affecting but i was surprised to report that the new york candle you made fun you're like new york it's going to smell like well, it's good, it's streets or the ways. subway you know what it's my favorite Grass. it's my favorite scent because the candles inspired by central park did you get a mini i got a mini i got a mini new york and it's it's inspired and its scent is inspired by central park i think it's delightful and um i like that one i also got a love candle and in fact for valentine's day and by the way uh homesick candles has an offer that's ending the day after valentine's day it expires on february 15th and if you go to their site which is homesick so you still have time to order to get it for valentine's day and this is a way better gift, in my opinion, than chocolate because it lasts. It lasts for these, you know, especially the big candle. Like how that's going to last for yep. quite some time, right? So um, they have two. They have first kiss and they have love, and they 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 both actually. I, I think I like the love scent a little more than first kiss, but again, this is personal taste, so don't take my word for it. <laughs> um, but they have a special that they're running with us, and again, it ends at the day after uh, February. So if you go to homesick.com. Uh, and get a you'll, and if you order the three wick or the um, what was the other one classic, classic or three wick and you put that in your basket then you can select a free mini candle yeah so here's what you do because I did it wrong oh you did it okay yeah. you have to so, order. so you have to so go to go to homesick.com and uh, start clicking around as John said there's all kinds of categories but for Valentine's Day there are the special first kiss and the love candle but uh, there's states there's colleges there's cities there's countries Memor I, I memories just, it's, it's a fun shopping experience so right what you now. have to do is go to put load up your your shopping cart and then for each of the classic or the three wick candles that you pick uh, add a mini candle select one of the mini candles which is a 1595 High value, value yeah then when you check out you hit in the code it says coupon code you hit in focus f o c u s and it will take focus. off the 1595 each of for each the, mini candle each mini candle so uh, okay. i tried to do it where i just went in and ordered the candles and didn't add the minis and then it said the coupon uh, code did not work. So if you did that like I did, um, I was doing it wrong. So now we're explaining <laughs> it properly. You got to load up, <laughs> load up your basket along with the mini candle you want, and then hit the code in, and then it will take. And the code is focus. Focus, yeah. And each mini candle is a fifteen ninety five value. This offer expires on February fifteenth. Minis are great. The day, at, yeah, I love the minis. By the way, the day after Valentine's Day. And I'll just reiterate when we close with with Homesick, thanking them again for joining us. And yeah, Tim. The packaging is amazing. Yeah. 
It's so if you're you're going to be really surprised when these arrive, you're going to love the look and the scent. So Great gift. Thank you, Homesick Candles. So it's homesick.com. Focus is the code. All right, we have one last shop talk to go through, and it's a brief one, as I recall. <laughs> it's yeah. And I guess it's kind of appropriate for Valentine's Day next week, right? Well, Scruff is Scruff. Scruff is like jacked. It's like uh, grinder. I don't even know all the. Did you hear the latest about Jack, by the way? Oh, all the pictures have been released. All the all the naughty They're pictures. They're not fixing it. No, <laughs> too hard. And, and and management thinks it's okay because you can't There's put no a names. name. You can't put a name to a picture. I just. I loved it, folks. Of course, I tried to go look. I couldn't find anything. Did you do? I I, I clicked I on the. Not, there's, I don't have the app. There's a thing that said not safe for work. Whatever. And Dave was a, a dead link. <laughs> all right. So, um, Scruff recently. Uh, now, Scruff is the grittier, for anyone who doesn't know, right? Scruff is the grittier version of Grinder. Grinder, so or as some people would say, men, yeah, perfect. Well mature said. men, um, maybe not so body conscious. We'll, we'll call it normal. <laughs> <laughs> I love you. We'll call it normal. <laughs> so they, they basically put a policy in place uh, that they were forced to do because it's an app and it's available on app platforms like the Apple Store or the you know the App Store or the Android. So you had store. to educate me on this. I didn't understand this. So can you explain? It's a criteria. So happens? the apps the app stores control the look of the content. So if, so if you're, you're on Scruff and you're are on you, are Apple's, you using Apple's you, platform? If people download it to Android or to Apple. They're using either the Android store or the uh, App Store, which is Apple. And they ultimately they have con they have content restrictions and guidelines. That's okay. And that's what I didn't understand. I didn't and, and, that, and it's that. confusing because in order Scruff was briefly taken off the App Stores uh, both platforms because of showing suge sexually suggestive pictures or underwear. So now the policy is you can't show underwear. No jock straps. No jock straps. You can't have no a set. swimsuits. No, well. Speedos, it said. <laughs> no speedos. Bikini bathing suits. So, John, throw up that, that graphic that I had. So I went to the Scruff website, and there's a picture demonstrating how the app works. You just zoom in on that phone. And then... That, so that, on their own website, that picture would never be allowed to be on the app right now. Is that suggestive? I think it's extremely suggestive, yeah. I mean, first, I don't wear my uh, underwear that low, but... Yeah, it says, to comply with the platform policy, photos and underwear, no, so that doesn't count, jock straps or bikini-style bathing suits are no longer permitted in profile pictures. In pro, yeah, correct. Not even in private pictures, not even profile. So one person said, which I thought was interesting, Craigslist, Backpage, Tumblr, now Scruff, um, are really essentially beholden to these these platform or content providers, right? Yeah, and it says it's a, the age, the, is censoring how its users can post photos. This ain't looking good, guys. Another person wrote, you people are going too far. I was wearing a swim, swimming trunks up to my belly button, and they censored it. Uh, no more Tumblr. No. Nope. Right? So what happens, though? Can you, unless somebody else, there's really no option, right? If you're Scruff or you're any well, of these, I'll give you an option. A, a, an option to for Scruff, go to a bar. I mean, you're not going to see pictures and everything, but that's another way of meeting people that used to work in the old days. <laughs> and if you're going to run for political, I'm sorry, office, I'm, yeah, if you're going to run for political office or be a movie star, then then you don't want to be on these platforms. No, um, but that was a kerfuffle that seems to have. Uh, been fixed because they put out this thing that said to comply with platform policies and the platform policy is the apple app store or the android store photos and underwear jock straps or bikini <laughs> bikini style bathing suits are no longer permitted what if you're a professional swimmer well all right i, I no. well this happened in las vegas at the pool parties remember they weren't allowing guys in with speedos in some of that. the parties because yeah. the straight people were offended um but i know straight guys that wear speedos yeah. what happens with these other uh, older platforms um Manhunt, for instance, does that also go through either Google or what? What am I? What What are the apps? It's only the app. So you can download an app for, let's say, Manhunt, but the app is actually what they call a web app. So all you're downloading is code that opens up the Safari browser on your phone. Okay. So it's not as efficient as an actual app like Grinder or Scruff, and it doesn't fall under the guidelines because they're actually using the app to get through to a site that they maintain that's not part of the platform. I know, I, I know it's like garbledy gook language, right? But that's how they circumvent it because they just they the app is the gateway to something else that opens up your web browser. Yeah. Well, there you go. So I, I guess we'll have to remove our jockstrap pictures. <laughs> Thank you, John.
Thank you. Thank you, John. Thank you, Garrett. Thank you, Steve. I hope everyone has a, has a great week. And, hey, thank uh, you, Don, and thank you, Jason. Room 237. Yes, thank you, Don and Jason. People, you can call us. we still got a number on the phone. I know we, we sometimes get lost in our own chatter, but, uh, you know, we do like phone calls. Thanks to our friends at Deep Discount. Be sure to go to focusgroupradio.com and click on the Deep Discount logo. Start shopping away. There's a special code FG15 for, uh, for February. And uh, thanks to our new sponsor, Homesick Candles. Be sure to order your candles today so that you can get them for Thanksgiving. So you can get them for Valentine's Day. Remember You'll to have them for Thanksgiving. <laughs> Remember to text and drive. <laughs> the red, put the red light on, John. He has to focus on that red light. Look. What does it say? It says, don't, don't text. text and drive. Why was I saying text and drive? Text to drive, arrive dead. <laughs> Don't, Don't text and drive, arrive alive. That red light's on. <laughs> it just does this thing to you where <laughs> I'm startled. <laughs> it's the Focus Group with Tim Bennett and John Nash. Accessible on all platforms. Subscribe, like, and rate us on your platform of choice. Learn more at focusgroupradio.com. That was a stunning focus group.